So I am trying to decide where to put my tent. I think I'm going to put it right there. It is in the shade, shaded by these massive trees right here. And I'm going to face my tent so that is facing towards the trees. So that the back of my tent is facing where all the other campers are and so I will have some more privacy. Alright guys, so I have just driven over an hour, like 60 something miles, up and down a mountain and valleys here in Death Valley. But I'll just call it the scenic route, but really it's like super terrifying. Um, just to find out the waterfall I was trying to find, I need a four-wheel drive vehicle to get to the trailhead. And yeah, I'm just a little bit bummed out by that. But it's okay, I mean, um, I did get to drive through, you know, these mountains, um, see a lot of really beautiful geology, and also conquer some fears. So I'm just gonna make the best of it and try to catch some trails on the way back. Here I am, I am posted up with my beach chair on top of a dune and we are about to watch the sunset on the dunes. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse because it was not an easy task to make. I am going to record this vlog in my tent because we're at a pretty busy campground and I don't really feel like sitting out in the open talking to a camcorder as people walk by. It just makes it a little awkward. But also I'm really cozy in my tent. I'm still laying in my sleeping bag. It's just such a nice day. I'm just really enjoying it. Um, I don't really feel like getting up, so this is where we are going to film our vlog. All right, so today I'm gonna tell a little story of why I have a flip phone in 2020. Let's see. All right, so I didn't just wake up one day in the year 2020 and say to myself, I need a flip phone. Um, it was kind of like a long time coming. Um, I have some notes here, so if you see me looking down, that's what it's from. Sorry, there's just like a whole swarm of birds flying by. So my senior year of high school, it was end of 2012, is when I got my first smartphone. I got like the iPhone, I don't know what it was at the time, like five I think was this, like the cool one. Um, and that's where it all began. I quickly dove into social media, like Facebook, Instagram, I think Snapchat was big at the time. And from 2012 to 2020, I had a smartphone and so for all those years I was adjusted to the social life online, you know, you're interacting with people online, but not people that you're necessarily going to hang out with in person. And I just felt really discontented that these friendships that you feel like you have over the phone or like online, and when you meet up with the person to hang out, it's actually really awkward because you've never actually talked in person before. So I realized, I was like, I just don't like this, you know? and. 
uh, after some trial and error and after some time, I realized that that life was not for me. Um, and so come 2018, I think it was like New Year's, beginning of 2018, it was kind of my New Year's resolution, was to delete my social media. And so for the first month of January, I just took the social media apps off of my iPhone, but kept the account. And after one month of realizing that I survived without checking my social media for one month, I decided it was time to just delete the account. So I deleted all my social media accounts. Um, and I was that way for... I do need to say this. Um, I did acquire a social media again, simply for my blog and promoting my blog. Um, just because that's like, you know, the easiest way for me to let my friends and family know like how they can find me and how they can tell others to find me. And I still have my iPhone and all I was using it for was uh, like to look things up on the internet, for navigation, um, for music and text and call. And that's it. Like that's all I was using it for and these phones are like really expensive. Um, and so, come 2020, March of 2020, I finally dropped my iPhone and it shattered beyond repair. It was like the 6S, like it, at this point it's an old iPhone. And so I'm like, okay, well, I can either go out and buy another iPhone or I can try something new. And that's what I did. I realized I really only needed my phone for call and text because my car has a navigation system that I've never used, but now I use it all the time. So literally all I needed it was call text, music, and um, navigation. So I decided to downsize and that's when I was like, okay, I need a non-smartphone. And they're really hard to find surprisingly. All right, so I made like a pros and cons list for having a flip phone in 2020. And so I'll start out with the pros because there's like way more of them than cons. So yeah, um, the first pro uh, is I paid for this flip phone in cash, $60. So I'm not paying a monthly fee just to pay off a phone. Um, and then my phone plan is only $30 a month. And so it's insanely affordable. I'm just talking around to some people and their phone plans are like a hundred something a month and I'm like, oh my goodness, no thank you. The second main pro is um, I don't feel tempted to buy the newest phones now and also just to like purchase goods in general because the fact that I do not have a smartphone um, and social media on it, uh, I'm not being exposed to all those ads and stuff on Instagram, Facebook exposed to watching other people's lifestyle and feeling envious for the things that they have like I really am super content with like everything I have like I don't feel like I need to go out and buy new clothes all the time um really only I just like buy clothes once a year now and I feel like when I had social media and everything I would go shopping like a couple times a year because you want to try to like look like your peers all right, the third pro is it allows me to be present in my day-to-day -day life. Um, I'm not distracted now by something that's always beeping at me and all these notifications going off. Um, so it's really nice. Like, I feel like I've really kind of, like, rekindled, like, my spice for life and, like, finding beauty in, like, the mundane. Um, I've gotten really good at dealing with boredom because I feel like a lot of the times people would jump on their phone just to scroll while they're waiting in the line because they're bored. They're like, well, I'm not doing anything else. Well, I've like learned to just stand there, you know, cause I don't have anything to pull out to entertain myself. And, you know, I've, at first it was like uncomfortable, like not having something to like pacify yourself with. But after time, I just kind of learned to deal with it. Um, sorry, there's birds. But anyway, I learned to like sit with my discomfort and I, actually learn to listen to like 
my own thoughts. Like, it's crazy. Like, when you're constantly scrolling, you don't realize it, but you're really not having, like, your own thought processes and letting your mind just, like, run wild as you're just going about your day. And so I've really kind of, like, realized that I have, like, a as an introvert especially, I have, like, an internal monologue, you know, that goes throughout the day, and I have these thoughts and ideas a lot of times for my channel and everything. Um, and so those things are occurring to me in a time that I used to distract myself standing on my phone while waiting in line, while waiting at the restaurant, you know. Now these are times where if I'm by myself, I'm able to think and, you know, make plans and everything. The fourth pro is that it has actually changed the way that I use text message. Um, now I only use text message to, one, communicate with my partner, Jake. Um, we work opposite schedules, so we'll kind of text each other when we wake up and, like, what's going on with the day, um, just because we don't get to see each other. But the other way that I use text messages is to make plans with my friends and family, and that's it. Like, I'm not trying to have, like, a conversation with you over text. Nothing personal, you know? It's just, like... No, like, to me, conversations are kind of more, I save those for, like, my sacred, like, in-person interactions, um, because I just enjoy it that way so much better. So, yeah, like, we can text. It's going to take a long time for me to get back to. I'm sorry. Um, usually, let's see, I'm a little hard to get a hold of. So, yeah, we can make text. We can text to um, make plans to meet up. That's it. Fifth pro, which kind of goes along with what I was just saying, but is being fully present when I meet with my friends and family. Um, you know, I'm, my phone's not going to be beeping and going off and taking my attention away from you. And so I can actually look you in the eye and we can have a deep, uh, full-on conversation. And especially because I don't have, like, social media on my phone or anything, I don't know what's going on in my friends and family's life unless they tell me. And which is nice, you know, because I feel like when you're scrolling on like Instagram and you see everyone's stories, it's kind of weird. Like you know what they're doing, you know, but you're not. You know, you know what they're doing, but they don't know that you know what they're doing. And I feel like that just feels weird to me. Like I'd rather someone tell me, like you know, I have this great idea, or I'm going on vacation, and I can express like my true like excitement for that person, you know. And um, just I feel like it's mo much more meaningful interaction than if I was getting that information from just watching their stories. More birds. My sixth pro, which I definitely think is a pro, is I am now freed, I guess, from judging other people based on them being like a troll on Facebook or having political opinions different than mine on Facebook because I just don't see it. Like, it's really nice that I'm not judging people, you know, I'm feeling sour towards them because they disagree with something that I think, you know, um, because it really doesn't affect our relationship, you know what I mean? Like, if they have a different political opinion. So I do enjoy now that, like, you know, I don't need to know about all that part of your life. You don't need to know about all that part of my life. And we can just be friends um, and talk about the things that we have in common. And I really enjoy that because I feel like it opens up, like, my world for the people that I can include in my life. Um, yeah. All right. And the seventh and last pro is that this phone is indestructible. It holds a charge forever, which is perfect for being an outdoors person like I am. I, you know, this thing can take a heavy, heavy fall. It can get soaked in water. And it just survives. Like, I don't think it's designed to be like that, but just because there's not very much glass on it, it's just all, like hard plastic it just survives all right we got a short list of cons they are there so I will say them my first one is that I cannot send my website links like my website my podcast and my uh, my YouTube videos links via text so it's kind of hard because people are like oh send me the link for your new thing and then I realize that I can't so I really need to get better about like making a sticker or something with my website so that I can like hand that out to people because I can't send you a link, an uh, internet link. My second one, the second con was that I was really adjusted to using emojis in text message. I didn't realize how much emotion and like, I guess, tone of voice they add to the text message. And so at first trying to figure out like, what am I going to use to make this text sound, like, friendly? 
Um, that was kind of hard. I'd basically just go with either the regular little smiley face, a colon, and the parentheses, or a little heart with, you know, the little angle and the three. Um, and that's kind of how now I have to, like, portray, like, I love you. The fourth con is that I can't take pictures on this phone. It does have a camera, but it literally cannot take pictures. I think it has a camera just so that it can receive pictures from people. Um, and that's okay. I mean, you know, if you want to send me a picture, I can download it when I'm on internet um, and then view it and I can forward that picture. I just can't take a picture myself. And also the last con is that it can be a little hard to hear me when I'm talking on the phone at times because I will forget that I have like this little tiny flip phone and I will kind of like move the phone around while I'm talking. So as long as I'm like real good and hold the phone right here, everything's good. But I mean for the most part, I'm, I have cell service basically everywhere I had cell service before. Um, I feel like it's made my relationships with people more meaningful, and at least on my end, I just feel like a lot more human connection, um, because that is my only form of like getting to know people and catching up with people in person. And um, let's see, I would say yeah. All right, guys, so let's go see the rest of Death Valley. It's actually really cloudy today. Yesterday was super clear, and now today is cloudy. I don't think it will rain though. Alright, so I got this nice little canyon to myself here, and I figured it's a good time to talk about the night sky uh, here in Death Valley. I will say, that was the most stars I've ever seen. Like, I've been up in the mountains, what have you, this was definitely the craziest night sky. Like, it literally felt like a bowl had stars all painted on the inside, and then it just like covered us here in the, the valley. Like. It was insane, and there also happened to be a meteor shower. I seen three, I guess, shooting stars then, and I wished on every single one of them. Oh my god, it was amazing. Like, I put some music on in my headphones. It was so dark, um, and I just kind of had a little silent disco. I danced around on my campsite, not bothering anyone, just having a good time. And it was probably one of the most relaxing nights ever. Alright, we are just sitting down for lunch here. I have a wonderful view. I'm gonna be having some dolmas and tahini. And yeah, with the view. <laughs> 